I mentioned this and haven't talked about it yet. So eight worldly concerns or eight worldly dharmas. So I mentioned this in relation to um, opposing feelings that are created through attachment and aversion. Opposing feelings that are created through attachment and aversion. So they're pairs, and the first pair is getting what you want. So this is the, what we would think of as the positive side, grasping onto something, attaching to something, having desire for something. So this feeling of, I must get what I want, and then attaching to it. And then the opposite would be avoiding what you don't want. So because of your karma, something appears, the person on the plane who pokes you with the elbow and says, I must tell you about my life. And you just don't want this. So getting what you want is the desire attachment side, and then avoiding what you don't want is the aversion and possibly anger, hatred side. So you can see how the mind moves between one and the other and says, well, this is what I'd like and this is what I'd like to avoid. And that's how the mind keeps moving. Instead of being stable, the mind goes from one extreme to the other. And either of these extremes cause suffering. Because whenever you go to one extreme or the other, it's disturbing the mind. And this is what we call delusion, is to disturb the mind. So remember we have the peacefulness of the mind, but now we're allowing the mind to go to one extreme, thinking that this is what's going to make us happy. So if I get what I want, I'll be happy, right? If I don't get what I want, I'm going to be suffering and unhappy. So we have this label on the situation. If I'm getting what I want, you know, I want the flowers and I've got them and now I'm going to be really happy. But now I have to spend all my time hanging on to the flowers, protecting the flowers, and probably having to put bars on the windows and an alarm system so you don't steal my flowers. Right? So it goes to that extreme where we get so attached to something that then we feel we have to lock it away. We have to close the doors and lock it. So it can be an emotion and it can also be a person. It can be a, an object. So it can be something simple like a cup, a bowl, flowers. It can be an emotion, something that you want to hold on to, this, um, this love that I have for somebody or whatever it is. So think about the things that you want and then when you're moving your mind in that direction, what I want is, then think of the desire and attachment that comes along with that. And then think of the opposite, when I'm getting what I don't want or I'm trying to avoid what I don't want, how does it feel? And often there's fear or anxiety associated with the second one. Okay? So when you're trying to avoid something and you can't, then often fear and anxiety and stress will then appear. Then three and four, wanting instant happiness. So this is like instant mashed potato. You don't want to peel the potatoes. You just buy a packet of instant mashed potato and you put it in the bowl and you add hot water and then you think, doesn't taste so good. So we have to go through the process. If we want happiness, we have to create the causes for it. If we're trying to get instant happiness, what do we do? We shop. Right? We go back to what we were saying before. We're looking for external causes of happiness. And this appears to give us instant happiness, but it's not lasting. And then the other one, what are we avoiding? Not wanting unhappiness. So when we get happiness, and then 
When we get happiness, what happens? Your mind automatically attaches to it. As soon as you're attached, you don't want to lose it. You don't want to have this feeling of it's being taken away from you. So you want to cling and grasp to it. So the I says, this is what makes me happy. This person or this job, this situation, whatever it is, we cling on to it and then we don't want to lose it. But inevitably, because it's impermanent, because it doesn't inherently exist, it must finish. So inevitably, when you've got the third one, I'm clinging on to this instant happiness because I really wanted it, then automatically you're already moving towards, I don't want unhappiness. But it's already happening. Because of number three, number four is already in the process. Because of number one, number two is already in the process. So if you know about this, then you're more practical. You think, oh well, you know, when I'm really happy, there's always a potential for my mind to go down, not to become depressed, but to change. So acknowledging that things change. Five and six is about wanting to be well known. So this is uh, wanting to be well known, so wanting to have a good reputation, and then when you have a good reputation, you attach to it. And then you'll do anything to protect it. So if you make a mistake, and you start worrying about what others are going to think of you, then you get really attached to your reputation, and then you get afraid that you're going to lose your reputation. Because you're attached to it, you don't want to lose it. So then the opposite is infamy, so having a bad reputation, or becoming very well known in a bad way, or for the person who wants to become famous and nobody knows them, this is a terrible suffering. So even, say, within a company or within uh, an industry, you can think, well, I'm a coach and, you know, everybody must know me. And you go to a coach's convention and they say, what's your name? Never heard of you. What's your name? Never heard of you. And you oh. This is pain and suffering, you know? I thought everybody knew me. So, wanting that sense of everybody knows of you, you know? You're, you're at the top of the pile, you're not at the bottom of the heap. So that sense of the, le the left-hand one, fame, is something that we would attach to, something we would feel is desirable. Some people might not think it is, but, you know, if you have this in your mind, it's something that you would attach to, it's desirable, and then the opposite side, it's undesirable, and you would want to get rid of it. So the unknown or infamy, bad reputation, you'd want to get rid of it, you'd do anything you could to stop it from happening. So the two, four, and six are the ones that we're trying to get rid of. One, three, five are the ones we're trying to get hold of. Do you understand how they're the, they're the opposites? It's what's moving you from one way to the other way, one way to the other way. Ah, the last two are great. Praise and blame. So we like the praise, we want the praise, and we can hint. Hint. You know, hint, how did I do? How did I do? You say, oh, you did well. So hinting is you're looking for something. You know, you can give little indication that you're looking for something back. So this is coming from desire attachment. I want to be praised. So you do uh, a project or you do some work and then you say, well, so how did I do? Okay. Not more than that. You know? So we want really good praise, and then if there's anything that goes wrong, this is where the blame comes in, we don't want the blame. So we want to avoid the blame, and if we get the blame, we get upset about the blame. But in Buddhism we say, actually, the blame is better than the praise. Because when you get the blame, then you know what needs to be changed. If you're blamed for something, you shouldn't immediately reject it you should think, is this true? Did I do this? If you didn't do it, you can then reject it. You don't have to take it on. But if you did make a mistake, if there's something that did go wrong, 
and you're receiving the blame for it, then think, what can I learn from this situation? And then if you're receiving the praise, then also, is the praise inflated? Is it too much? You know, because sometimes people are pumping your ego. I say like a bicycle pump, attaching it to your ego, and pumping your ego, and they're saying, oh, you're the most incredible, you're wonderful, blah, 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 blah. And then what comes from that is exaggeration. So pride can come from that. We're going to talk about pride in the delusions. So be very careful with praise and blame. In our society, this is very easy to be affected by. And when you're praised and you feel that you're going up, then easily somebody can come along with blame and then you go down. And so you have this energetic feeling, an emotional feeling of going up and going down. A very good thing to remember uh, when you're being blamed, if the blame is unwarranted, if somebody says to you, um, you did a project or you, just, you did something at work or even something at home, and they're putting the blame on and you think, did I do that? No, it's, it, it's not me at all. You know, I just didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't make a mistake. It's okay. But they're still blaming you. When people are blaming you, there's often the feeling of taking the blame on and then thinking about it over and over and over. So a good way to think about this is, when they're blaming you, they have a bow and arrow. Remember the bow and arrow? So they have a bow and arrow. And the arrow on the end, the tip is poison. So they put poison on the end, they shoot the arrow at you. So this is like the poison words are coming towards you. The arrow falls at your feet, right? Because it's only you who can take hold of it, attach to it. You pick it up, you look at it, and you say, oh, I think this is a poison arrow. I wonder who shot it. I wonder why they shot it. And then you stab yourself with it. So you're stabbing yourself with the poison arrow, the poison words. You stab yourself, then the poison starts to go through your system, and then you say, why did they poison me? It's not fair. So we have to recognize our part in this, in that, yes, it is others shooting the poison arrow, but they're not forcing us to internalize it. They're not forcing us to take it on, to own it. Right? So when the arrow falls at your feet, look at your attachment, your desire to know what this is. Where does it come from? Why are they saying this? Right? So you pick it up, and this is not the wisdom mind, so you pick it up and you go, wow, that looks like really dangerous poison. Because these words can be very harmful, can be something that really hurts you. So you decide to pick it up, you look at the poison, and then you go, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then you go, oh, it's not fair. Why did they do this to me? I'm a good person, right? So who is harming you? Is it you or is it the other? Of course it's you. But when it's happening, we don't see it as me harming myself. We put the blame. So we go to number eight. We put the blame on the other person. So then there's a retaliation, right? Then the non-virtues come. I go to the water cooler. I start talking about them, you know? Did you see blah, 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 blah? And then we can get the resentment, number nine. We can get the wrong views. This is the person who's hurting me, who's making my life a nightmare. So number 10 is now in operation. We're using number seven, Blake, because we're going blah, 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 blah. We've definitely got ill will, number six. Let's go for slander. This is a really good one. And then we can tell a few lies because let's exaggerate and make them seem much worse than they are. Sexual misconduct, we'll leave until later. Um, so you can see how you can go through them. One, two, and three, more difficult. But four to ten, very easy when you don't like somebody. So where does our suffering come from? If we have resentment and anger towards somebody, then we've got four to ten in operation. It's like, you know, we click on all the lights and we say, okay, let's go for it. So this is what we call delusion. We're switching on all of these um, possibilities, saying negative things about them, creating a negative energy around them. And at home, it's very harmful and we feel it, but we most normally do it at work. 
if we don't like somebody at work, if somebody's very successful and we're not, if somebody new comes in and they're the star and we felt we were the star and they're sort of going up and we're here, we can start to get resentment and anger and then we can start to do all of these things to bring them down. But when you're bringing somebody else down, what does it do for you? How does it make you feel? You also feel you're bringing yourself down. You're destroying the values that you had, the person that you were, what everybody liked you for and respected you for, out the window, and now we're going for the negative because I want to win. Right? And so in the eight worldly concerns, you can say, I want to win. I want to get what I want. Number one. So we're working with the, the um, non-virtues. We're working with the non-virtues to get what we want. And then we're working with the non-virtues to avoid what we don't want. Losing our job, losing promotion, losing reputation. Do you understand how it, it's very easy to get involved in this because we're afraid. If we're afraid of losing something, because of attachment, we'll do anything to keep it. Because we're attached. Whether it's a relationship, money, job, possessions, whatever it is. Once we're attached to it, we don't want to lose it. Then we want instant happiness. So I want things to happen like this now. And if it's not happening now, we can go back to the negative things, thinking it's going to create something positive, but knowing deep down, something negative cannot create something positive. It doesn't work. So if you want the promotion, if you want the sales, if you want things to get better, you have to go with the ten positives, not the ten negatives. This is what you need to persuade yourself into when everything is calm and peaceful. Not when things are going crazy at work or home. Because our habit may be to go back to the negative. But if we've got that habit, then we can see the result is suffering. That when I'm divisive, when I have ill will, when I tell lies about somebody, when I covet their job, when I have resentment because they have the job, or resentment because they have more money or a better car, or more status, whatever it is, if I resent them for it, I can start doing something to bring them down. Why them? Why not me? You know, I'm a good person. Why isn't this happening to me? I should be the Dalai Lama by now. I feel. You know? It could be like that, isn't it? I could be sitting here thinking, it's not fair. Why is he the Dalai Lama? Why aren't I the Dalai Lama? We've got the same clothes. <laughs> right? So, it can be anything. It can be also spiritual. Because once you get involved in spirituality, I want to be a better person, then you can become attached to that. And then spirituality can also become a problem. That you want more spirituality, you want a better reputation from spirituality, you want to attach to all of that, and then you start plotting to get rid of people who are coming up, who may be challenging you. So, very much, um, if we want to be famous, well-known in our circle, we can protect that. We can do things to stop others from coming into the circle. But what does that do for the way I feel about myself? Wanting to be praised and not wanting to be blamed, we tend to shift the blame to somebody else. If there's a problem in the office and it was me who did it, then can I say it was me? And if it wasn't me, am I looking for somebody to put the blame onto? Am I looking and saying, well, I think it was her? Or going to the boss behind somebody's back and saying, I think it was them. Because it suits me. Because I think, by doing this, I'm going to get happiness. Because I don't want unhappiness. And this is very worldly. It's not spiritual, it's not long-term, it's on a very short-term basis that just today I'm like this. And tomorrow I can be completely different. So that's why we say it's worldly. It's not spiritual dharma. Spiritual dharma is you're headed in on the path of happiness 
over the long term. Whereas this is very short term and very subject to change. Very quickly it changes. Today you can want to be famous and tomorrow you don't. Today you want to grasp onto something, tomorrow you don't. Today you're being blamed, tomorrow you're being praised. Completely forgot about the blame. So it's very short term and it changes your mind very quickly. And in that way, it's extremely disturbing because we go through this day after day.